um, if everyone can unmute themselves so that I can mute everyone. Oh. We're going to start with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all. I thought I muted everybody. Scott, I'm trying to mute and I can't. Uh, so what happens when you press mute all? Nothing's happening. Well, looks like I can mute everyone. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Um, would you like to try again? Maybe you can. No, as long as you're here, you can make sure that it's, that it's all going right. Sure, no problem. Um, please note that all counselors are here except Counselor Merritt and Counselor Wong. I know that um, Counselor Wong was having some issues. She was trying to connect. So hopefully she will um, be with us shortly. Um, are there any citizen statements and petitions? At this time, I don't have anything. There's nothing in the question and answer box. Going once. Going twice. Okie dokie. Um, at this time, we will have our reports from our subcommittees. We will start with Counselor, trying to find her, Counselor Calhoun, if you give me a minute. Go ahead, Counselor Calhoun. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, as going forward on today, April 27, 2020, Committee on Committees met on Friday, um, April 20th for to put in motion uh, the recommendation for um, to refill the Board of Education four-year membership position. And I would like to just follow a sequence <clears throat> and uh, of notes that I have um, uh, for the record. On April 8th, DTC Chair Michelle Adams notification to DTC membership for outreach to fill vacated position of Board of Education four-year membership um, position vacated by uh, Patricia Davis. Uh, between the dates of April 13th through 19th, DTC Chair Michelle Adams and I started our lengthy communication via email pertaining to filling um, the Board of Education <laughs> position. Initially, there was confusion about which structure, whether it be town committee or DTC committee, um, whom would make the final recommendation to the full town council for appointment of the Board of Education four-year membership position. Um, which means would the DTC bylaws as this is a democratic uh, party position or the committee on committee process be the recommended um, name for the position. On April 14th, Marguerite Phillips, town clerk, sent an email to myself and DTC, DTC chair, Michelle Adams, clarifying the process by stating, quote unquote, the town charter will supersede the state statutes. Also establishing that there were 30, there was a 30 day deadline to fill the BO, refill the BOE four year membership position, which ends on May 3rd, 2020, which falls on a Sunday final date to refill the position. So noted in the chart in the town charter must be by 
May 4th of 2020. <clears throat> Excuse me, April 17th, DTC special meeting calls for recommendation to the town council to fill BOE four-year position. Uh, April 19th, committee on committees gathered to prepare questions and set a format for the April 20th meeting to allow the candidates to introduce themselves. <clears throat> April 20th, DTC endorses uh, Jennifer Marshall Neely. April 20th also, committee on committee, open town committee, open town meeting to allow all interested candidates to introduce themselves and answer three prepared questions. Each candidate received the same three questions. After the, the candidate <clears throat> process was finalized, deliberation on the same day um, were made on the basis of town boards and commissions interest form, which is a Bloomfield town form interview responses by the town by excuse me by the um the candidates and also resumes and or cv submitted directly to our town clerk Mar marguerite phillips nine out of the ten candidates were reviewed and as the chair of committee on committees counselor stephanie calhoun noted that i had recused myself from the vote due to miss femi Bogle Asagai and I work at the same state agency. <clears throat> I have since inquired with town attorney Mark Needle Needleman, who has given me the okay to take part in said vote today. The outcome of the April 20th meeting has recommended Ms. Femi Bogle Asagai by Francis Politis, second by Mayor Suzette DeBetham Brown to the full town council for a vote to fill the BOE Board of Education four-year membership position on this date, April 27, 2020. <clears throat> all candidate information was shared with all DTC membership. And that finalizes my, <clears throat> my, um, my notes, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Calhoun. We will have administer, uh, admin and education and finance by Councilor Curtin. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, thank you, uh, my fellow uh, counselors. I don't really have much to report from admin education, so I'm going to forego re re reporting anything. In addition to that, I know in regards to COVID-19, the town manager is going to report on that uh, tonight during his report and give a little bit more extensive report. In regards to finance, the only one item that I would like to talk about before I move on it's just uh, on the agenda tonight, um, there is discussion on ordinance 18-6, tax abatement for volunteer firefighter and ambulance personnel. That's on the agenda. I really don't, uh, no reason to go into that in depth tonight. I will discuss it once uh, there's a motion on the agenda. So with that being said, Madam Mayor, I would like to, to move on to other business. Thank you very much, Councillor Curtin. We will do public safety, Councillor Goff. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we have not met since the, since our um, meeting at the beginning of April, and the next meeting of public safety will be before our next council meeting on May 11th. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I went all out of order. I'm so very sorry. Um, Councillor Wong have joined us, I believe. Councillor Wong? Hi. Uh, yes, Hi. Councillor Wong. Um, Communities. That's okay. I'm just glad you're here. I think Councillor Merritt has also joined us and Councillor DiLorenzo has also joined us. Thank you very much. Councillor Wong, would you please at this time give your um, update? Thank you. I will also forego a community service update. Uh, we have not met as a committee, um, but I continue to give my applause and thanks and appreciation to the social services staff um, who are deemed essential, who show up and um, service a community on an ongoing basis. So, um, and I think that's gonna be in, incorporated in some of the later reports down the agenda. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Excellent, thank you. Land Use and Economic Development, Deputy Mayor. Uh, good evening, thank you, Madam Mayor, little fellow counselors. Uh, we have not met. Uh, we're hoping to get some air time next month on the 19th of May to have a meeting for the next meeting of the Land Use and Economic Development Committee. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Councillor DiLorenzo Golf. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. This is Councilor DiLorenzo. The golf committee met this evening prior to our town council call and uh, wanted to report that the uh, golf course did open at the end of March. It is walking only. There are no carts in use and there is no one allowed in the clubhouse that is closed. And also the range is closed. So right now the um, Advantage card members have been halted. The food and beverage sales are, are closed. They're not in progress right now. Uh, however, uh, despite all of that, we have been extremely busy through the month of April and the golf course has done really well during the month of April. Everyone has enjoyed walking the course and uh, it has been going quite well and everyone is uh, taking it in stride with a lot of the restrictions that have been in place based on our governor and uh, of course the COVID-19 uh, new protocols that have come out. So uh, in addition to that, we also looked at some of the improvements that were made to the golf course. So we have a new range machine, but as I said, the range right now is, is closed. So that machine's not being used. It, it does require you know, a lot of uh, disinfecting if it is used because you have to manually uh, use the machine to get your settings and pay your, your fees. Also, the, we saw the new golf carts. They are really, really nice. They were all put together last weekend. There's about 75 of them. They're a really nice uh, blue color with rain covers on them as well. And they look really good. Uh, there was also some work done to the parking lot. We had a lot of cracking in the lot. Those cracks have all been sealed and uh, we will be doing new striping on the parking lot in the next coming weeks. In addition, we did use, we did put down the new carpeting and that also looks great. The carpeting throughout the pro shop is in and it's also been installed in the dining room. So that is all in place and ready to go once we're able to open up those areas. So uh, right now we're, we're in, in pretty good shape and uh, we will be talking about some more long range plans at the next meeting to evaluate where we are, what we see happening as a result of the uh, restrictions that have been placed and to see if it's had any impact on our uh, membership or our tea times. Right now though, everything is looking good and uh, you know we'll make a decision later on whether or not the carts will be put back into service. Right now, uh, they will not be. So. Um, with that, I believe I covered all the highlights and um, that's my report. Thank you very much, Councilor DiLorenzo. Thank At you. this time, we're going to go into council old business. 1617-51, consider and take action regarding tax abatement for 194 Terry Plains Road. Is there a motion on the floor? So move. Uh, Councilor DiLorenzo. Yep, I'll make the motion, Madam Mayor, that uh, we, the town abate the outstanding real estate property taxes in the approximate amount of $2,623.14 concerning unique ID parcel number R05278 with the address of 194 Terry Plains Road in Bloomfield, Connecticut. It's currently owned by the town of Bloomfield. This item was discussed at the April 21st Finance Subcommittee and it was unanimously recommended at that time that it go forward to the full council for approval on today's meeting. Is there a second? Uh, Deputy Mayor has seconded the nomination, the uh, motion. Any discussions? Um, uh, I just say, Madam Mayor, it's Councilor DiLorenzo, just to point out that this is the property that's next door to the Wintonberry Golf Course. And so, uh, you know, this property, now that it is owned by the town, will be part of the future plans for the golf course. So I think this is just the next step in that process is so that we, you know, can abate those taxes and get them off the books since the property was purchased as a result of a foreclosure. Okay, um, I saw, is it, he took his hand down. Um, Councillor Merritt, you have a question? Yes, I, I think 
who owe, who owes that money? Is it the town now owes the money, or is it the prior owner, or is it the bank uh, that we're abating? I think the taxes was owed to the town, but once the town acquired the right. property, I don't think the town can pay taxes to itself. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably some issues with that. Well, um, yeah. And who owes it? Does it? Oh, the does it really now, it? The ta now that we own the property, we owe the taxes. That was that true? Yeah. Yes. We, we, we purchased the property right next to the golf course. So now we would owe the taxes to ourselves. Deputy Mayor has his hand up. I'm going to lower his hand, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I think just on that point, again, I believe that was what was discussed when we first heard the first motion in April uh, that the Council of Di Lorenzo mentioned. There was an outstanding tax bill that we were advised we would have to consume uh, in this purchase. I don't think there's anything different. It's just that we're going back to, to make it, to clarify that now. Okay. Council Councilor Curtin. Uh, yeah, I just want to state, Madam Mayor, that this property is also the future use of this lot is for ex uh, extended parking uh, for the golf course, because that's one of the issues with limited parking for the course. And I think if there's any question in regards to the taxes, I think Carrie's also online here and she could uh, elaborate a little bit on that. But I think this was in regards to the, the agreement that uh, the town will be responsible for the, the taxes that's outstanding on this property. Councilor Goff? Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. I, I just wanted to mention, um, because I think we're all, it's all coming up saying the same thing. Um, at finance committee, uh, I mentioned that, you know, this has come up several times when we've had acquired different properties. And most recently before this exhibit example, it came up with the Vincent property so uh, the, recommendation, the recommendation was made at uh, finance committee that going forward, I mean, you know, the, the process of this and the Vincent property and anything we've done, other, other of these we've done have been as the, the town's process stands. But the comment was made at finance committee that going forward, when the town is in a position of either purchasing or acquiring through donation of property, uh, with the intention that once the thing clears, the back taxes will be abated, we should just, you know, include everything in the motion at the time so that this becomes just a, a matter of course, because uh, it, it is sort of strange now to come back to it. So I, I think everyone is in agreement here that um, this is really a formality to uh, finish acquisition of that property. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, do you have something else to say, sir? Not specifically on this, but it's just a matter of a point of information. Is uh, is the YouTube uh, recording up and running? Yes, it is. Yep, okay. it is. Okay. Thank you. So I got uh, all in favor? Somebody. Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Um, before we get into new business, um, the um, update from the town manager and the manager did not make the agenda. Can someone please make a motion to add it to the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussions? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So we will add update um, from the mayor and the town manager right after we finish with our last um, new business. So moving on to new business 1920-49, uh, Councillor Calhoun um, did speak about there being a um, vacancy on the Board of Education. Whenever there is an elected vacancy, it's up to the town council to appoint. Um, there has been a um, procedure that we put in place in 2017 where um, members of the community or the DTC, if they were interested in a position, that they would come before committee on committees. They would send in their interest forms and their resumes to our town mm -hmm. clerk. She would pass them on to our committee on committees. Committee on committees would then do an interview and make a recommendation to the full council. Whatever positions that need to be 
filled. It is a council appointment, meaning that the entire council gets an opportunity to vote. So I know that the entire council received information for, I believe it was 10 individuals. Nine of those individuals went through committee on committees. Since the committee on committee meeting, there has been some um, uh, confusion and uh, in order for us to be able to move on in the spirit of transparency, I'm going to uh, open up this particular um, nomination for a floor vote. Now let's be mindful that the policy that has been put in place, the procedure that has been put in place with committee on committees stands. Um, we do have to fill this vacancy within a, um, a couple of days. So instead of going back to committee on committees, I'm opening up this nomination tonight for the Board of Education position for a nomination. I do see two hands. I am going to lower the hand of Councillor Curtin. Yes, Councilor Madam Curtin. Mayor. Yeah, Madam Mayor, um, I do understand the technicality with um, with committees on committees. I will go into a little elaboration doing comments, but I would like to uh, put on the floor uh, a name, uh, Femi Bogle Asagai, to move forward as uh, the replacement on the Board of Education. Is there a second? Second. There's a nomination and there's a second. Is there any, I see Councillor Goff's hand. Is there another nomination, Councillor Goff? Uh, no, Madam Mayor, I actually have a point of order here. Um, yes, sir. And actually, I think that supersedes the motion. Um, I think we went through a lengthy explanation, a lengthy timeline from Councillor Calhoun uh, earlier in the, um, uh, in the committee reports. Uh, but I don't think she, I don't think she made it clear that what, why, why we are, why we're talking about taking nominations from the floor now uh, that there is an issue with the uh, April 19th meeting that was not noticed. It was not, a, uh, it was not an open meeting. Um, and the uh, advice we got from the town attorney today relative to this process. So uh, before we take nominations from the floor, uh, if, you know, if, if people are prepared to do that, because I frankly am not prepared to do that at this uh, tonight, um, I think there should be an explanation of um, what the, you know, what the issues are in this case. Oh. oh hold on, hold on, hold on. Councillor Calhoun, would um, you like yes. to respond? Please yes. Go ahead. Um, I would like to state um, that it, it crosses between an oversight and my, my lack of not a full knowledge that would constitute a full meeting. The intention of committee on committees was not to have a full meeting on the evening of the 19th. We were gathering to put together questions for the, the uh, candidates for the date of the 20th. Questions so that all, three, all 10 candidates or anyone else that would like to present themselves um, would have the same three questions as well as the format for the meeting of uh, April 20th. So it, 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 again, it wasn't called per se as a meeting. Uh, we gathered as just to set the format and gather the questions. And I guess I didn't see how I would go about doing that in previewing if, if we were going into or lack thereof a meeting without notifying every one of the questions for the April 20th meeting. Thank you. I have since spoken and had counsel with uh, our town clerk, Marguerite Phillips, as, as well as town attorney, Mark Needleman. Thank and, you. And those things have been brought to light for me. Thank you. Um, Councillor Politis, I am going to unmute you and lower your hand. Hi, Councillor Politis speaking. I just wanted to kind of just 
clear the air from my standpoint of what happened on Sunday night. Um, we did we did get together. We did just kind of clear, you know, just kind of try to formulate a game plan going into Monday night as to what questions we thought were important to ask to the people that were interviewing. Um, actually, just kind of like because I got bombarded by emails that week between the DTC and um, Marguerite with members on committee on committees. I did not have. I could not go through all my emails. I did not have all the resumes that I could actually look through and stuff like that. So we just kind of made sure that everybody had all the information we needed for Monday night. We didn't deliberate on any one of the people that were there. We simply formulated questions, kind of came up with a format as to how we're gonna do it so that when Monday night came about, it would, be, it would not be an epic meeting of uber amounts of time. So that's just wanted to kind of clarify what, what actually happened in that meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Politis. I see Councillor Curtin has his hand up. I'm going to lower his hand and unmute him. Councillor Curtin? Did I get rid of him? He's muted. muted. He's muted. I'm on you. He's I'm all set now. Thank you, Madam okay. Mayor. Uh, Go Cal ahead. Councilor Curtin, I just want to add to, I believe that, you know, Committees on Committees intention was to me just to get the questions together. That's my understanding. Uh, my understanding is they did not discuss candidates. They did not go through resume. And that's the reason why I felt confident in the work that they did in presenting uh, the candidates, uh, in, in, in interviewing the candidates and, and presenting the, the nominee tonight to the full council as a recommendation. But due to the technicality, I get it. So I'm happy that the town attorney did, uh, did recommend that we can move ahead and uh, make a nomination from the floor, move ahead. Uh, I, I truly do believe that the, the committee did a, an excellent job. Uh, and I, I, I will hope that my colleagues will go ahead and, and vote for Ms. Bogle Asagai. Thank you. Um, as it was stated by everyone, the uh, brief, meeting that was had on the 19th did just that. We had a list of questions um, that was presented to us um, by India. She was so gracious to send us a link um, uh, for us to be able to download questions. And I think we got together and we narrowed those questions down based on the time that we would have for each um, interviewee. It was very interesting that it became a problem. And since it became a problem, I know that Councillor Calhoun has reached out to both Marguerite and our town attorney. And the town attorney did state that we could take nominations from the floor this evening because we have to fill this position. We have to name a replacement. And there's so much more going on to be able to go back over and interview 10 people and then call a special town council meeting to be able to move on, it just seems like a lot of time. I know that the council was presented with everyone's resume and interest form. So um, I'm going to, I'm hoping that we can go ahead and get this done this evening. I'm going to lower Councillor Merritt. He put his hand up the right way. I'm gonna lower his hand and I'm gonna go ahead. Councillor Merritt, did I lose you? Um, I'm going to lower his hand and I'm going to unmute him. Councilor Merritt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I just think this seems like a very inappropriate process. I, I realize there's a deadline, I guess it's a, a week away, but I, it just seems that to say, okay, we're going to open it up for nominations from the floor. I nobody had any notice that this was going to happen. So nobody's got a nomination ready coming from the floor. So I, I, I just don't like the smell of this. I'm sorry, I just don't. I, I understand, I talk to people about it, but uh, it just seems that... Is it me or is it Councillor Merritt? I think it's Mr. Councillor Merritt's I think uh, Councillor Merritt has connect, uh, frozen on us. Um, I do see Councillor Goff, his hand is up again, Councillor Goff.
Oh, there we go. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, I guess a couple of things. I, I, I'm, I'm going down the same track as Council Merrick here. Um, uh, as I think everyone knows from reading the town attorney's recommendation, his initial recommendation was simply to remove the taint from the Committee on Committee's uh, activities by having them essentially start the, start the process over again from the interview stage from having a, having a public meeting. Um, I think that would be a good way to go if we want to do it, if the Committee on Committees wants to meet again. Uh, I think it may also be a good thing to do if the council wants to meet again or if the council wants to meet after considering nominations. Like Councilor Merritt, I, I've been following this in terms of the DTC nominee, in terms of the Committee on Committees nominee. I have read the, um, you know, I have read the materials, but I certainly, for one, am not, you know, I'm not prepared to nominate a candidate. And I, I've got to say, the process does not seem right if we say, well, there was a problem with the previous nomination. Now we're just going to come in and nominate the person that there was a pro, you know, that that was nominated in the previous process and just move on. I, I, I think we have to do something more and we have to uh, examine, examine this um, with a little bit of distance. Thank you. Councillor Merritt, we lost you. My comments before I get heard or was it not? No, we heard you. Okay. <laughs> but then you froze, but we heard you. Um, is there any other um, nomination, any other um, conversation? Councillor Wong has her hand up. I'm going to lower your hand and... You, you have to unmute you. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is Councillor Wong. Um, with taking all the comments into account um, and with the nomination on the floor, I don't see an issue with making the nomination from the floor. All of the council members were provided uh, the candidate uh, documentation, such as the resumes and um, town clerk top form or application. So I think we should take it upon ourselves as public officials to make sure that we execute our own due diligence and make sure that we can support the decision if we were to lean on committees on committees. Now, now that we are not, and now that we are doing a floor nomination, I think we can really, we, we had all the material and the data in our hand um, to look through all the candidates that were presented. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Councilor Wong. Um, I see Deputy Mayor, I'm gonna lower his hand. Um, and you gotta unmute yourself. No, yeah, I'm That's the difference. I'm asking everyone if I can mute and unmute, it'll be a little bit easier, but go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. I was trying to use the unmute on the bottom of the screen, but it was in the center at the time. Uh, I wouldn't mind having an open discussion and, and having a, a, a nomination from the floor tonight. It's not something I was prepared for either, but I think with the time limit and the notion of asking people to come back again and re-interview, that's a little excessive. Uh, you know, I think we can work something out. I just don't know what kind of a process we're going to have tonight to, uh, to make these nominations, whether you want to put two or three names up and see what happens. You want to go one at a time. Uh, we did not have a, 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 a you know a plan for this, so uh, I asked my colleagues what their preference would be. So um, I did open it up for nominations. There was a name nominated and seconded. If there's another name, please bring forth that name for nomination. Well, uh, well if it's the month still open, there, I was very pleased to see that there were a really number of really fine candidates, any one of which would have been suitable, could be suitable for this position. Uh, three come to mind. I'd like to just put two names out there. Uh, Todd Cooper, Tiffany Glanville. So um, just let's do it at one at a time. There is a nomination of Todd Cooper. Is there a second? Going once, going twice. There is no second. There's a nomination of Tiffany Cooper. Is, is there a second? Councilman Goff is trying to say something. But I don't know. Councilor Goff. I will second. 
Oh. I will second. I'm having trouble with the muting and unmuting. Because you guys aren't letting me do it. So if I'm trying to unmute you, but you've muted yourself, I can't unmute you. Okay. So who, you're, who are you seconding? I'm, I'm seconding the nomination of Todd Cooper. Okay. Is there any discussion? Discussion. We have two. Yeah. We have two nominees on the floor. We have two nominees on the floor, so we can close nominations. Uh, Councillor Curtin's hand is Hold up. On. I'm going to lower his hand. Hold on. I did second. Right, you already seconded it. So we already have two nominations on the floor. So we can close nominations and we can discuss the two. Yeah, and then Madam we can Mayor, vote. just a motion to close nomination. Is there a second? Uh, Councillor Wong is seconding that. Is that what you're doing, Councillor Wong? I see you're waving at me. <laughs> okay, so um, do we want to go ahead and discuss Mr. Cooper? Um, there's a motion of Femi Bogle Asigai. And then there's a motion of Todd Cooper. Uh, Madam Mayor, can I make a comment? Councillor Politis, I'm going to lower his hand and unmute right. him. Councillor Politis. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Fran Poli uh, Fran Poli Council Politis here speaking. Um, I, just, I, need to, I think I need to address just a few things um, in regards to um, the nominations. Uh, I, I thought Todd Cooper was excellent. I really did. Um, however, I really believe that uh, Ms. Vogel, a say guy, was, was really on point. Um, and I want to address an email that I just actually received while we're on this meeting um, and say that, yes, I was made aware after the nomination that um, the family of Bogle Asaya Guy did sue the um, Board of Education back when um, she was, um, her daughter was expelled from school, was in the school system. I am also aware of the other lawsuits at the federal level. Um, I actually spoke with her today, um, had a nice long conversation with her um, to just kind of get some more perspective on this whole thing. And was actually um, was actually more impressed after that conversation than I was on Monday night. And um, so the answer to the question that was posed to me in the email is, yes, I'm aware of all things. And yes, I've spoken with her. Yes, I feel good about this nomination. And yes, I'm ready to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Politis. Wow. Councilor Curtin. Madam Mayor, I didn't have anything to say. Council Politis basically just took the words out of my mouth. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly what to do. I do have some questions here, um, statements here. Um, uh, Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it was Todd Cooper. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I, I appreciate. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I appreciate uh, Councilman um, um, Francis Polite's uh, commentary, although uh, I still, I, I didn't get a chance to speak with the nominee. Uh, and I do have reservations about her past issues and litigation with the town because they haven't been cleared up in my mind. And uh, uh, as well as uh, issues under state employment. Uh, given that uh, the committee has um, one name forward, I think, I think the additional name, I think, as I said before, all of these candidates that presented, that have been listed for consideration at this point, pre prepared and presented well. They're all on paper, on, uh, on interview, uh, taken at their word. Uh, and uh, this never came up in the discussion. Uh, obviously the committee was following a pattern of just of, of asking the questions and receiving the answers and, and moving on. So there really was no attempt to raise this issue to see how it go, how it ran. So I have a hard time, I have a hard time uh, uh, voting positively because on, on an issue I don't know 
why I, I know why she sued the town. I know she lost the suit. Uh, I, I, I I don't know how I I don't feel comfortable uh, nominating somebody who's been through that process with the town, had lost the, the appeal, lost the court suit, and I don't know what motivates her. I will say. I was extremely impressed with her presentation, which makes it doubly difficult to have this conversation. Uh, so I don't, it's awkward. And as I said, there are other candidates and I named one, so I would prepare to vote for the other at this point without Councilor, further information. Councilor Calhoun. Um, thank you for all the commentary. What I will say is there was, um, as we bring forward lawsuit for, um, one of the latter for state of Connecticut. If this was an issue, all, all issues are serious, but if this was an issue where Mrs. Bogle Asagai um, could not be rehired by the state of Connecticut in the investigative format that the state of Connecticut has to take, then she could not or would not have been hired back into the state of Connecticut. She is a retiree of the state of Connecticut and also brought back as an adjunct professor currently. Um, so again, yes, we all take um, all, with all seriousness to the account that has happened. But when you are in defense of, of, of yourself and if you think you've been dealt with wrongly, um, I would agree that you would stand up for yourself. Um, and we all know that going into this type of deliberation, it could, it could go for or against us. Unfortunately, it went against uh, her. Um, but again, as a, as a retiree for the state of Connecticut, she was able to be brought back as such um, with, with due process. Thank you. So at, at this time, I'm going to try to unmute all. Um, we do have a, we do, I'm, I, I can't unmute you if you, okay. We do have two names on the floor. Madam I'm going Mayor, to, uh, is, are we just ending discussion? We already have discussions. We have oh, two no, names. I, yeah. I, I would like to make a comment before we vote. Oh, okay, Councilor Goff, go right on ahead. Okay. No, no, I mean, I, I mean, I think, you know, I, I, I think we should try to move on here, but I That's just what I wanna, was trying to do, sir. Well, I know, but I, but I think we should all get, we should all be able to get some comments in. I have not had a chance to comment on, on either of the candidates. Um, I was very impressed with Mr. Cooper's um, biography uh, when I, uh, resume and stuff, when I read it initially for the, the Democratic Town Committee. Uh, uh, nomination. Can't hear I, you, Councillor Goff. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was very impressed with his uh, resume, and I think he would be an excellent addition to the Board of Education. I think he would wor work well with everyone. I want to come back to the issues, however, with um, the other candidate, Ms. Bogle Asagai. Um, I think a lot of people are looking at the school board issues, and I think those are important. Uh, I think that the litigiousness and the sort of divisiveness is potentially problematic. It was a long time ago. But I actually am more concerned with the record at the Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities. Um, in particular, the fact that the, uh, that the uh, uh, Ms. Bowell Asagai uh, ended up um, losing her job because of issues with um, evidently falsifying her time statements. And, um, you know, I find it difficult that once that occurs, she sued the state and then appealed that on the basis of violations of civil rights. So, um, you know, I just think these are difficult issues. I think it's unfortunate that these were not asked of the candidates. You know, this was not asked of the candidate when she was in. I think it's unfortunate that other candidates were not, you know, were not asked about 
uh, potential issues. Uh, I know in discussions with one of my colleagues, uh, one of the other candidates who I thought looked good on paper, um, a, co a comment was made and it's like, oh, well, you don't know about them. So this is, you know, this is difficult and it's difficult to come out at the, uh, you know, and, and, and do sort of uh, without uh, extensive due diligence. Um, so at this point, I, you know, um, I would like to hear what everyone has to say, and then I think we should proceed to a vote. Thank you. Madam, Madam Mayor. Councilor Curtin. I, I would be remiss if I did not uh, comment on my colleague's um, uh, comment that he just made. I think I have done an extensive since, okay, let's just back up for a second. Committees on committees did their job, and we received a flood of emails from every member of the Democratic Town Committee within the town. And I have took it upon myself because common practice is don't listen to what someone else is saying about someone, do your own research. And all of my research I've done with Ms. Um, Bogle Asagai, she is the most qualified individual for this position. And I haven't heard a single commentary from any one of my colleagues who are talking about some of the things that they're referred to that goes back to 20 years. We live in a country that we all have a right to sue for whatever reason it may be. Now, as a parent, I'm gonna take my hat off as a council member. As a parent, I believe Ms. Asagai, Ms. Bogle Asagai has what it takes to be an effective board member. Now, if any one of my colleagues could find any other reason pertaining to that point, I will be willing to open to discussion. But this seems like more of a, a character assassination, in my opinion, on, on this lady's uh, past that's, in my opinion, it's not, it's not really bad. I've, I've seen some really bad people, okay? It sounds like Trump. I've seen some really bad people. So I just wanna move ahead with this vote, but I have to say, be very careful when you go into someone pass and try to make that an issue. What we're talking about here is putting a board member who could actually advocate for our children within this town. And okay. that's what this vote is about. Okay, thank, thank you, Madam you. Mayor. I'm going to- I'd like to call the vote, uh, oh, oh, Ms. Asagai. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on. I'm, I'm, going to let, I'm going to let one more person speak and that's gonna be Councilor Wong. And then we're gonna call the vote. It's, we, we have an agenda, we have an executive session. We really got to try to get through this. Councilor Wong, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to chime in that I was a, a part of all the processes um, that got us to this day. I was present for all of the interviews. I did my own due diligence and looked at all of the resumes and re-watched and re um, the interviews. And as a council member and as a parent, um, uh, Ms. Asagai was by far one of the most progressive candidates. And I think that in today's world, we need progressive thinking to really move forward uh, the school system and the public and our, um, as well as contribute to the Board of Ed. So I am a council member. I also am a taxpayer and I also am a parent first and foremost. And I am truly I'm excited for um, Ms. Asagai to contribute her progressive views um, to the Board of Education. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. So um, I believe that um, when everyone received the interest forms, everyone received the resumes, um, the interviews was an open process. Everyone was able to view them or to rewatch them. Um, we have two um, names on the floor. India, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Are you muted? Okay, the two names are? Femi Bogo Asagai and Todd mm -hmm. Cooper. And Todd Cooper. So I'm gonna ask, um, because we are uh, via Zoom, I'm gonna ask India for you to do a roll call for this vote, please. And once she calls your name, you can uh, say who you're voting for. Okay, so the first motion was on the floor. It was moved by Council Curtin, second by Council Calhoun to nominate Femi Bogo Asagai. Roll call vote is Mayor Suzette DeBethan Brown. Femi Bogo Asagai. Yes, that's what, okay. No, no, no. That's what I'm voting for. I was only well, doing 
one motion at a time. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So I for Femi. Is um for Femi. So Suzette um the Beast and Brown, aye. Uh, Deputy Mayor Mann? No. Uh Councillor Calhoun? Aye. Councillor uh De Lorenzo? Aye. Councillor Goff? No. Councillor Curtin? Aye. Council Merritt? No. Council Politis? Aye. Council Wong? Aye. Motion passes for uh, Femi Boga Asagai. Thank you. Okay. Next motion for um, nominee. Well, do I need to do that one or no? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, item 1920 50, consider and take action. I'm sorry, um, for that uh, motion. Um, Femi Bogle Asagai will be appointed to the Bloomfield Board of Education to um, finish out the term that was um, vacated by our former board member. Okay. Motion 1920 50, consider and take action regarding transfer appropriations within so the 2019 2020 budget. So move. Second. Who second that? Kevin. Kevin. Okay. Councilor Goff. Okay. Any discussions on that? Do we need Carrie to intervene? Well, provide information. Perhaps we Councilor just. Councilor Mann, you have your hand up. Well, perhaps you just read the uh, the resolution uh, to the audience who's listening, so they know what we're voting on. Uh, India, can you read the resolution, please? The resolution is resolved that in accordance with section 908 of the town of Bloomfield Charter that the below transfer of appropriations be approved. The amount below is free from encumbrances in the 2019-2020 general fund budget from um, account 0910530052251 and DC Professional Services in the amount of $16,000. Account number 09105800 heart and hypertension in the amount of $19,000. Therefore, requesting the authorization to send the below detailed items from the 2019-2020 general fund budget to account number 0160000 town attorney consultant in the amount of $35,000. Okay. Any discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Motion carries. Item number 1920-51, consider and take action regarding update to town ordinance 18-6, tax abatement for volunteer firefighters and ambulance personnel. Is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Second. Moved by Councilor DiLorenzo, second by Councilor Wong. India, do you want to go ahead and read that for me as well, please? I can. Okay. So we move to, to approve the proposed changes to the town ordinance, chapter 19, section 6, parts B, 3, C, 4, and D, as authorized by the Connecticut General Assembly Bill 5125, Public Act 19-36. Any discussions? Yes. Yes. Councilor, yes. Councilor Goff. Yes. I, I have a point of order on this. Because I thought that the motion that came out of finance subcommittee and I thought the directions, since this is an ordinance change, isn't the correct procedure here public to hearing. recommend this for public, public hearing? Public hearing, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. If, yes. if, if that's not what the motion is. The, yes. the motion needs to be descended to public hearing. Yes, you're Great. correct. So do we have a friendly amendment to the motion? I guess that's... Yes. Yeah, part of part of the motion is to to have a public hearing on on the matter before we move ahead yes. with the uh, changes. Correct. So mm -hmm. if if the town clerk can just make that adjustment, that motion. To I think that. David made the motion. David, are you okay with a friendly amendment? Did I make that motion? I think I did, Madam Mayor. Oh, Patrick made the motion. Yes, I'm. I accept the amendment. I was looking to ask the same question. So okay. okay. 
I accept the amendment. Okay, from a procedural standpoint, that public hearing will be scheduled for when? The next council meeting? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask the uh, town manager for his update. Actually, Madam Mayor, we, yes. we need to we need to vote on that, I believe. Right. Oh, I thought we did. I'm sorry. To send it to okay. public hearing. To send it to public hearing. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. At this time, I'm going to ask the town manager for his update. Robert? Me? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes sir. Um, thank you. The revised budget's been presented to council. They're beginning to work creating a financial plan for the town and the school district. In consideration of the different environment we find ourselves in from the pandemic, changes proposed to the budget this year are significant and very different than the thoughts and objectives that guided decisions prior to the pandemic. The administration's proposed over $2 million in cuts and has struck all new positions from the town's revised budget and has proposed no cuts to the school district's operational budget or new positions. The council has a very busy schedule in working on the budget and staff looks forward to supporting council through this process. The governor's office and state department of health will be creating a care facility in Bloomfield at Wintonbury to handle uh, cases from the hospital that can be relocated out to a backup facility. Tasks on that are just now starting and I believe there will be more dialogue in the future and planning as the facility is set up and run by the state. The distribution of meals, necessities, and assistance to individuals and families is ongoing. We've seen helpful support and donations from individuals as well as the town to ensure that we can provide basic staples, food, and necessities to those in need. To find out more, please take a look at the town website and updates from the school district or reach out to the town senior and family services personnel. Council has also distributed tax relief program information to taxpayers in Bloomfield and staff encourages citizens to gather information and consider participation in these programs. We are here to help provide information and you should take advantage of these relief programs if you can. Businesses have several forms of support as well and should find out more about those programs by taking a look at the Chamber of Commerce website as well as the town's website. A new emerging program for businesses will try and help them secure personal protective equipment for their workforce. These materials are being collected and distributed by the state's regional supply chain and the town emergency management folks. More information on requesting and receiving those materials will be forthcoming. Thank you, Mayor. Excellent, thank you. So um, for my updates, um, as of yesterday, we had 233 positive COVID cases in the town of Bloomfield with 42 deaths. The West Hartford Bloomfield Health District is doing contact tracing, meaning if someone is positive, they try to find out who that person was in contact with to make sure that how they're feeling and if they are exhibiting symptoms that they get tested as well. We do want to say thank you so very much to our first responders who are out there protecting us and providing safety for us. We thank you so very much. Um, a special thank you to the chief. He's been doing an amazing job um, making sure that we get our messaging out to our residents. Uh, the town manager talked about the um, municipal stockpile that they're now donating PPEs to our businesses. They call them level two to level four. Level one is our first responders, level two to level four is everyone behind them. If you do have a need, please contact Lieutenant Benvenuto. She will be the one to make the request through our web EOC. And then she will be able to pick up the, the request for the entire town. And then we will divvy up the, uh, the request to the businesses that have um, reached out. I also want to thank the um, food bag program, the uh, partnership between the Bloomfield Congregational Church, First Cathedral, Rehoboth, and now Wintonberry Church. They provide 
um, foods to make sure that we have food bags on Fridays between, I think it's between 12 and one at the human services building. You get to come and they put a bag of groceries in your car and you drive away. Also on Saturdays, the Bloomfield Congregational Church makes sure you can get a hot meal to go. Um, so if you're in need at all, please um, see our website as the town manager said. Also, you can call um, social services, senior services or the town hall. Although the, biz the building is closed to the public, we are still open for business and we are still available to provide assistance to all those who need it. I do wanna say a special thank you again to Otis Elevator. We have five um, group homes in the town of Bloomfield and those group homes were in need of uh, face shields. They didn't have anything. And Otis Elevator called and said, what can we do for you? And they were able to provide those five uh, group homes with face shields. They've also supplied um, some masks, some uh, cloth masks that we're going to distribute. There's only a few um, that we will distribute. Um, another thing that has come up um, is the businesses within our plazas. Um, the Wintonberry Plaza and the Mini Mall Plaza. There, I have been getting a lot of complaints from our business owners who is stating that the landlord is looking for their rent. And if they don't get it in a certain amount of time, they're going to be evicted. So um, that information has been passed on to the chamber. It's also been passed on to um, Governor Lamont's team. I will also be having a conversation with the um, Deputy Economic Director, um, Gwendolyn Thames, to see how we can help our businesses. It is a very difficult time. No one could have imagined that we would have been here, but we are. So we need to make sure that our residents and our business owners here in town, that we too are taken care of. We do not want to see any business fail. We do not want to see our plazas empty. So we will try our utmost best, whatever it is that we can do to pro, uh, provide directives on how to get resources and um, see how we can help to mitigate those circumstances. We will get through this. Um, it will take some time, but I do believe that we will get through this together. At this time, we'll move on to the approval of the April 13th uh, minutes. Is there a motion on the floor? Wait a minute, I gotta unmute you all. So Is moved. there a motion on the floor? So moved. Second. Uh, that's Any discussions? I, I have one small correction, but otherwise I will send it to India. Okay. So it's approved with one small correction. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? I, I was not in attendance, so I can abstain. Approve. One abstention. Yes. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and have council comments. Madam Mayor, um, India Rogers, town clerk. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, India. I don't uh, see you. There were two, two sets of minutes to approve. You didn't approve April 6th, the special meeting. On my on my um, agenda, it only says the April 13th meeting. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, on mine it says April 6th. <laughs> Do y'all have April 6th? Did y'all look at April 6th or yeah. not? Does, does yeah. anybody else have April 6th? Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that. On their agenda? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. so can I have a motion to approve so the April 6th? So Second. Second. Okay. Any, any discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay. So now we're gonna go to council comments. I'm going to make sure that we're all unmuted. I'm going to start with Councilor Politis. Uh, Councilor Politis speaking, thank you, Ma Madam Mayor. Um, just wanna state um, a, a thanks to everybody who did apply um, for the Board of Education position. Um, it was really encouraging to see the depth of talent that actually did come out and, and go through the process um, unfortunately, after the process, I mean, it got a little ugly. Um, and I think that discourages people from, from putting themselves out there after the fact. So I think that we need to be careful about how we discuss um, some of these people that are really trying to do good um, and trying to volunteer their time to the town. Believe me, um, as I found out over the last few months, 
um, town council is a lot of time. And I'm sure Board of Education is probably just as much. So we're, it's no small volunteer acts that we've asking these people to do. And I think that, you know, at the, at the root of everything, I think everybody um, that applied had their, the, the interest, the best interest at heart of the Board of Education. And I believe that we got it right. I know that not everybody agrees with me, um, but I, I stand behind my decision. Um, and I just wanted to put that back out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Politis. Councillor Merritt. I don't have any comments. Thank you. Councillor Goff. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Actually, um, I, I will just piggyback on uh, Councilor Politis' comment um, because I, I, you know, I agree with that uh, completely. The the you know there was a huge uh, number of people who came forward, and I think that as we as we found on committee and committees last year, we saw more and more people coming forward to do things. So I do think that that is a that is a very hopeful sign in terms of volunteerism and community. And one would think that um, given the times and what people are experiencing now, uh, that will only uh, uh, get more so. Um, the other thing I wanna just mention, and I think we're all experiencing it, is we've sort of now gotten into a routine with all the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, protocols and uh, how we're living our lives. And uh, I think it's great that people are just starting to find new, new rhythms and new ways of doing things. So um, we'll see what happens when we can start getting more back to quote normal, whatever that, that will be. Uh, but I think people, uh, you know, I, I think people are really trying to uh, adapt well. So that's a good thing. Thank you. Councilor Calhoun. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I will again um, piggyback on previous council's comments. It, it's a great feeling knowing that I'm new to council this year. And then there's um, this type of interest moving forward because it seems like it's a lot of work um, to put into uh, the, e the efforts are a lot of work. It's rewarding though. Um, there are other seats that have to be filled um, in the volunteer volunteerism realm. And um, I will make sure that via Marguerite that these positions are open and made aware for those that are interested to step up. Um, I would hope and pray that everyone continues. There are states that are being opened up, hopefully um, not too soon. And I'm hoping that everyone continues to stay safe. We don't know what's going to happen uh, come summertime. So let's be mindful of each other. Um, and again, be safe. Thank you. Councillor Curtin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I want to start off by just thanking my colleagues who served on committees on committees. Uh, I did have an opportunity to watch the entire process. I believe they put a good process in place. Uh, they interviewed uh, nine candidates, and I believe they made the right decisions. I'm happy that the council conveyed that tonight. I also wanna echo my colleague's sentiment on everyone who stepped up to the plate uh, in regards to an interest uh, to serve on the Board of Ed. I believe that we have seen an infusion within the town of Bloomfield on um, folks wanted to get involved and wanted to take part and I commend that. I also wanna extend uh, uh, a big rave to Ms. Uh, Femi, uh, Ms. Uh, Femi Bogle Asagai uh, I've had the opportunity due to everything here to really dug into her past and I've seen her commitment based on everything that I've read uh, that she's committed to our young people uh, as an educator. So I think that will translate into the town of Bloomfield uh, School District uh, from the Board of Education standpoint. So I look forward to having conversations with her uh, from a parent's perspective and also from a, a council member's perspective. Uh, I also want to commend uh, town staff for the job that they have been doing over the last uh, month or so in regards to uh, COVID-19. Um, you know, town staff down to various uh, 
uh, departments, they have been rotating, working from home, coming into the office and social distancing and everything. I think they've they've stepped they've went above and beyond for everything that they've been doing from finance, every single department and what the work that they're doing to make sure this town stays afloat. I also want to say to my fellow uh, residents within the town of Bloomfield, um, I feel your pain. We're all going through this together. We're all in this together. And this council will continuously work in towards making sure that we provide the, the financial relief to everyone within this town that needs it from, from our taxpayers down to our businesses and so on. We, we're here to work with you to make sure that we help us all get through this process. And to my colleagues, I know for the last uh, month or so, we've been navigating through this whole new uh, social distancing and doing our meetings on Zoom. And uh, I just wanna say thank you all for the work that you're doing and for your commitment to the town of Bloomfield. I commend you for that. And uh, I just, uh, just wanna continue to do the work that we're doing. Thank you very much and have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Councilor DiLorenzo. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to follow up on what Councilor Curtin said. I've been so impressed by the adaptability and flexibility of not only our town, but of uh, the residents in our town. It's just so nice to see that under the circumstances that we all have to live with right now, uh, that everyone is getting along, everyone is finding new ways of doing things. And even though we're, we're stuck at home most of the time, um, everyone has adapted. And I think it's great that everyone is following the guidelines that have been put out by the, not only the CDC, but also the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District and our task force here in town. Hey Bill, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, Robert, we can hear you. Oh, sorry, I'm in the other room too. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. That's okay. Nope, nope. Well, I thought I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> anyway, just again, just following on those same comments that others have already made. You know, thank you to our town, our town staff, our our task force. It's just been great to see how things have come together under the circumstances that we've lived in and so quickly, you know, in, in short periods of time. Um, also wanted to bring up the budget. So I think this has also been talked about or talked around a little bit by other counselors, but again, we went through one budget and it was presented by our town manager, but basically that budget had to be thrown out. And now we basically have to sort of start over. And we know that it's gonna be a difficult year. We have a lot of expenses and we have a lot of things that we wanna do, uh, but with COVID-19 now and the changes that are being made, the budget has to also change. So we are going to be starting those sessions and I want to encourage the public to get involved. It's, you know, again, on Zoom, the meetings will be published and noticed and you'll have the opportunity to provide your questions and we can hopefully answer them. But again, I think everybody should take a part in the process and be heard since uh, we will be coming up with a final budget. And I could say that I'm certainly uh, not looking to raise anyone's taxes. This is one year where we will be mm -hmm. doing what we can to uh, make sure that our citizens are able to get by and uh, not have to be worried about finding more money to pay tax. So um, those are the two, two big things. And um, that's, that's all I really have. I appreciate everybody listening in tonight. And uh, please stay safe. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Wong. Thank you. This is Councilor Wong speaking. I echo uh, Councilman DiLorenzo's comments as far as, you know, digging in and really finding what we can from a leadership standpoint to alleviate the tax burden from um, what we have in the community right now or the budget that we're facing. So I think that we're all really aiming to do the same thing in that regards. And um, I don't have too much comments. Um, I do echo a lot of my peers um, and colleagues on the line sentiments in regards to thank you so much for the essential staff. Um, especially in the town of Bloomfield and in the state of Connecticut. 
um, for, you know, just working really hard for each other. And um, I am truly excited for the BOE vacancy to be filled by Miss Femi um, Bogle Asogai. I think that her progressive views are really going to contribute significantly to the Board of Education um, as being a piece of the puzzle um, and being a part of a team. So I look forward in, um, in, in watching her on the Board of Education. And I also I really am encouraged by the engagement that we see from all the candidates that applied. I'm so encouraged to see such a pool of talent, new faces, because oftentimes we've been kind of recycling some of these um, seats in our town. A lot of the current folks, and thank you so much for their service, have been here since I was a little girl. So maybe it's time that we um, invite some new creativity and um, a fresh way of thinking um, might just be great for our town. And I'll end my comments with a quote per usual. Uh, Change is the law of life and those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. John F. Kennedy. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Mrs. Femi Bogolasagai, a new appointee to the Board of Education. The counselors voted for her. I was in the minority, but I will support her. I think this, uh, this nomination and this appointment uh, it will show us that we do need to do it right the right way. And we do need to improve these processes so as to not create the wrong way and make sure that everybody is viewed and it's all open public. None that, that being said, uh, I just want to comment on uh, town is still functioning. There are still activities going on within the town. For example, the library is having an event on May 13th. Dr. Tracy Parker is author of Department Stores and the Black Freedom Movement. She's going to be speaking via Zoom on that day. That's May 13th, 6 to 7.30 check out the uh, library uh, website, bplct.org, to get information and get yourself on that Zoom event. Uh, I, comments made by the fellow counselors about the new budget coming on that we're working on. Uh, clearly, uh, there'll be changes to be made because uh, we all want to do what's right for our town, for our, for our community. There are issues to be concerned about, and that is the future both uh, next two years, next five years. We don't know what the economic impact that's gonna be staring us in the face. We can only worry, we can only angst about it. But these uh, six uh, weeks, seven weeks of uh, lockdown have had a serious effect on our, on our economy and on the people who have worked in that economy. We don't know what its overall outcome will be. So we have to prepare ourselves. We can, we can cut ourselves to the bone and the budget for sure but uh, we also have to have, be prepared because it could get worse. So it's a very, very difficult process to go through and come up with a solution that's satisfactory to everybody, but I'm sure this group can do it. Um, I also wanted to say, uh, support your local businesses, order out <laughs> and uh, support the, be thankful for the volunteers who are still working around town. I saw a group out uh, cleaning Philly Pond over the weekend and there are you know, people still taking interest. The bike path is getting more activity. Surprisingly, uh, uh, it, it's, it's uh, every day, it's very busy. So these are indications that people wanna get out and they wanna take advantage of the facilities we have in town. So we wanna keep them open if, if we can, we wanna make them better if we can. We also wanna be open for, for business uh, in six months. So thank you very much. And we look forward to the next and more important discussions on the budget. Thank you all so very much. Um, this is new, um, having meetings by Zoom, not being together, um, not bouncing things off each other, it's new. I don't think any of us have ever um, tried to govern during a pandemic, but now that we've done it, we can definitely put on a resume, right? Um, so thank you for the grace that we're trying to show to each other as we navigate this. Um, our new normal. I believe it's going to be this way for a while. Um, and I believe we need to be able to embrace that and be able to be um, gracious to each other when we probably don't get it right the first time. Um, I am thankful that people want to be involved in our town because they want to lend their voices and their expertise to help us make our town better. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, sometimes the way we go about things, um, the politics of things, sometimes is very tricky. And as um, Counselor Politis says, it can be a turnoff. Um, so the way that we politicians um, do that, we need to be a little bit more mindful and a little bit more um, uh, taking in a wider view. It's not just about me and what I want. But it's what probably what's going to be the better thing for our town and our community. So with that, I do have two um, quotes. I, I was trying to wrestle to choose one, but I couldn't, so I'm going to say them both. Um, the first one is mastering ourselves is strength. I'm sorry, mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. And the next one is fall seven times, stand up eight. At this time. I would like a um, motion for us to go in executive session with the mm -hmm. town manager. Hold on, I have to notice who's going. The town manager, the assistant to the town manager, our HR director, Cindy Colville, and our town attorney. I think I got that right. Am I missing anybody, India? As well as the labor attorney, William Ryan. As well as the labor attorney, William Ryan. But before that um, motion, please, um, if you're still out there listening or if you're going to see this um, later on on replay, please go out and look at the new revised budget. There is an email address for you to be able to send in your budget questions. Please, 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 please take advantage of that. Please lend your voice to this process. Now, can I have a motion? A move. A motion to adjourn. Oh, no, no, yeah. executive session. Exactly. Executive We're going session. into executive session. Executive session. Sure. I know that Danielle was making that motion before I was finished. So I'm going to take Danielle as the motion maker second. and Councillor Curtin as the second. Now, for the viewing audience, this is going to be our first time trying to do this um, via this media. So I think we're going to pause Zoom, and I think we're supposed to be getting on another platform, counselors, to have our executive session. Yes. Are we all on an agreement? Yes. 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 Okay. The platform is WebEx, so I hope everybody has their link. Correct. That, so, that's in, okay. Town manager. So, do we just end this session and come back on? Let me give you instructions right now. Okay. And India, you've sent that out, yes? Okay. Uh, that was sent out by the town manager. Bear okay. with us. Bear with okay. us. Okay. So, we all have to go to our email. Goodbye, mm -hmm. y'all. Have a good day. Scott. Scott. Uh, oh, Robert's you, trying to say something. Yes, Robert. Before you leave this meeting, yes. on the bottom left of your screen, there's an icon that looks like a video camera. And if you yes. will click that, it will stop using the video camera here. And when you go to the WebEx meeting, your video camera will be available there. So my question to you is, I just clicked on it and it says restore, move, size, minimize, maximize, close. Oh, they're all Robert, gone. Did you send that email recently? <laughs> it, it's in calendar. It's in your calendar. It, if you look at your calendar, there's a special executive session in your calendar. And if you open that appointment, there's a button in there you click to go to the WebEx meeting. He sent it Thursday, Rickford. Okay. So I can't, I can't do the video thing. We should stop your video. Yeah. We're still recording, FYI. Sorry. Yes. I know, but because it's going to continue to record. But if you want, ah, man, can you, you can drop off, you can drop off the call completely and just re and come back in when you come out to vote to to go into I was gonna do. whatever actions you have after. If you okay, need. I'm, I'm going to get stay, off. I'm going to stay here. Okay, I'll you know, see you in a little while. All right, bye, everybody. Okay, we got it. Okay, bye. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. Why are you trying to hold on, Suzette? No, I'm trying to end my meeting right here. I want to make sure I can get on the right meeting as well. Okay, but we can all hear you, so be careful. <laughs> no, that's fine. Scott, can I, I can't pause. You can drop off. I'm going to try to mute everyone else, but I'm, I, it looks like Councilor Merrick just didn't get rid of his, his uh, looks like he's, you know, he's still open, so I'm going to mute him. Um, Councillor Calhoun is still, I'm going to mute.
Oh, I just did a dash over here. <laughs> Are we the only one here? No, we have more. Danielle joined. Hey, Scott. <laughs> Scott's been hanging out here by yourself. Oh, we're back. Yes. Scott. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, made it. <laughs> We're back. Made it. Everybody? Scott, are you there? Yep. Jo Joe left. Joe didn't want to work. <laughs> Joe never showed up. <laughs> I've been waiting for you now. He stopped in the Zoom room. Yeah. <laughs> I think Joe tapped out. <laughs> oh my God, Scott! He, too much technology. <laughs> Scott, I'm so sorry. That's right. So that's what it is at this point. So. So who who's with us? I see. Um, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight of us. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, we're now back into regular session. Um, Sharon? Oh, there is. Sharon? Yes. Oh, you're with us. Okay. So we're back into regular session. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to end our meeting for this evening? Move. 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 Okay. <laughs> there, there are so many voices. <laughs> Danielle, Danielle moved it. Pick your favorite. It was unanimous. Danielle okay. Moved. Danielle moved. Two seconds. I think Rickford second. I start, yeah. Yeah, All in favor. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Scott. Yes, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks, Scott.